Welcome, everybody. Uh, today, we have the pleasure to have Masaya Takahashi. Masaya is a new postdoc here in CFD, but before he was doing his PhD in Illinois, United States, and he finished last year. Now he is here with us to talk about dynamics in quantum coherence with quantum channels. So, Masaya, you have the floor. Okay, uh, thank you everyone uh, for coming to my talk uh, and thank you for uh, introducing me personally. So, uh, yes, I'm going to talk about uh, the quantum coherence with quantum channels. Okay, let me introduce myself uh, briefly. Uh, yes, my name is Masaya Takahashi. I got my PhD at Southern Illinois University in 2022. And I started uh, the postdoc here uh, in last March, and I'm working with uh, Dr. Baldix Yarek. And so uh, we are now working on um, kind of like quantum objectivity, but today's talk is uh, the coherence, coherent power, which is also uh, my uh, like my uh, PhD study. Okay. Masaya, before we proceed, yes. can I ask one question? Right. Where is the photo from? Uh, this is the photo from uh, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, Tokyo? To Tokyo, and uh, this is taken in a, in a festival, a beer festival in Tokyo. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I was drunk. <laughs> well, you, you can have it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think yeah, this picture is a yeah, great, nice picture to yeah, introduce me. So, First, uh, I want to uh, I want to start with uh, what's quantum coherence. So, let us consider a uh, phase dumping channel. Uh, it is uh, applying a rotation on the z the z axis uh, with uh, parameter theta, which is a random variable with Gaussian distribution of variance to lambda, and we have uh, we have the like, qubit states uh, in some state. Uh, like this, and state after the channel, this channel uh, is like this. So we have uh, absolute square of absolute, absolute value on the diagonal term, diagonal elements, but non-diagonal terms, we have like uh, exponential uh, to, to minus uh, lambda here. So the lambda, as lambda increases, the state becomes to a diagonal state. Uh, so we, this is like, so if you have a very super, super random uh, like phase uh, ticking on the state, then the state after the channel uh, will be a diagonal state. This is, yeah, what happens. So the coherence uh, actually happens because like after, if we have zero here, and the diagonal diagonal state is kind of classical is called classical state. So that we want to uh, keep our coherence in uh, this uh, non-diagonal element. So, but at this moment, um, this state means kind of uh, qualitative. So we need more like mathematical frame to analyze to to analyze uh, coherence. Then. And now uh, resource theory of coherence is our tool. Uh, and the resource uh, theory, one of the famous uh, resource theory is entanglement. And each resource theory has uh, its three components. First one is free state, uh, which is supposed to have no resource in it. So for entanglement, uh, separable state, uh, for coherence, in coherent state, uh, I mean diagonal states in given basis. And free operation. Free operation uh, cannot create uh, any, I mean, um, resource. So for entanglement, LCC, and for coherence, incoherent operation. Actually, there are many, I mean, various uh, family of incoherent operations uh, corresponding to like physical uh, situation, but in this talk, we just care about two uh, two types of incoherent operations. And the third one is quantifier. 
hormones are functioning. So this for entanglement, uh, entanglement entropy or formation or blah, 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 many uh, quantifiers. And for coherence, also we have uh, different types of uh, quantifier, but we just uh, need our, uh, one of them, uh, relative entropy of coherence in this talk. Okay. And here is a brief, the brief, uh, like basic concepts, basic uh, framework of coherent theory. I mean, the result theory of coherence. So incoherent state, supposed to have no coherence, is the diagonal state with uh, incoherent basis. So this is, we, we define incoherent basis. Uh, depend, it's corresponding to the physical situation. When we consider like some, like the, the, some, in some cases, this is the like energy, like, Eigen state or something like that. And this Kali I is a set of incoherent states. Uh, we denote this by this symbol. So we, I want to add, uh, stress that uh, the coherence is basis dependent resource. For example, this state is maximally coherent state if we choose zero and one as an incoherent, incoherent basis, but it's uh, incoherent if we choose a plus and minus uh, basis because there's no uh, superposition uh, over of ket plus and ket minus here. And incoherent operation uh, is sometimes uh, written in IO is an operation with a cross operator says so that so for any I uh, the state state after the cross operator is also a uh, in uh, incoherent state. I mean, the, the it's it this would be diagonal. And the maximally incoherent operation, uh, which is uh, written in MIO, is an operation such that so after the operation, it's also diagonal. So then uh, it's obviously uh, incoherent operation is a subset of a maximally incoherent operation. Uh, pardon, so which are the maximally incoherent operations which are not incoherent operations? What's the difference? Uh, difference is the... So the, the incoherent operations, in, in, uh, the, the first definition, which is in, term of, uh, in terms of Krauss operators, right. uh, they should be incoherent in one chosen basis, or they can be incoherent in different bases depending on the index i. I mean, yeah, it depends on uh, different bases. I mean, ah, so it can be for different uh, cross channels, so for, for, for different i, this can be a different basis, and if this is the same basis, then we call it maximally incoherent, right? Second? You, you, um... uh, so here, uh, it can be incoherent, so it can be diagonal in different bases, which will depend on the Krauss operator. Or so, like I, I think it's very simple. It's like this: so, so you you can either uh, sort of uh, require that in the level of individual Krauss operators, you uh, you remain uh, incoherent, and this is this. Uh, and go here, the, uh, you know, uh, if every Krauss operator when you act with, from both sides, uh, you know, keeps this incoherent state incoherent. But so, in different bases? It can no, it's like for the fixed bases. Fixed oh, the fixed bases. Okay. Yeah. And the second thing is you don't, like this maximally incoherent operations is when you don't specify what happens on the level, level of individual Krauss operators, but you say, that's oh, the okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. And okay. It's the same basis all along. Okay. 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 So in in the second one, it's you just care about the results. So the, the right. whole operation should not lead you out of the incoherent. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. 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 I also from over all type of like state or. Uh, what, which, 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 which I? First, I? first, uh, first uh, the definition of the su subscript I? No, first equation. First equation here. Yeah, yeah. I goes to all possible states or? No, it's a base. Only no, base. Yeah. So maybe, yeah, this should, this, sorry, this equation is not uh, correct because the, 
this right. there, there there should be a ramda eye or something yeah. like uh yeah the uh, the spectrum eigenvalues yeah yeah eigenvalues right yeah sorry about that yeah thank you for your questions and uh, the third one is relative entropy of coherence uh, which is a uh, quantifier uh, we use is given by and uh, this equation this so basically it's I mean, it's simply it is simplified uh, by uh, one of our entropy S. So here, and this delta is the phasing channel. Is given. Uh, is, this mm -hmm. is also defined like this. So it's remove all non uh, diagonal terms uh, from the state. Uh, is the, again the here we fix uh, incoherent bases. So uh, and. So for and uh, for maximal uh, coherent states uh, plus again so so if we uh, choose zero one basis so plus uh, we have a maximal coherent state and uh, tensor D and we we get uh, log two D as a a value of like maximal coherent state here. So, and now uh, I'm going to talk about coherent power with some very simple model. So we have um, a system and we apply an operation and we get the state of the depression. But uh, the created coherence uh, depends on the input. Let's say we have an operate uh, Hadamar gate as operation and if you have zero, hit zero, then we get maximum coherent state. So then we actually get the coherence. But we have a uh, plus state here, then uh, state after the Hadamard gate with zero. So then we actually lose coherence. So then we have we we take the soup uh, over all input. And then now uh, we have the uh, definition of coherent coherent power and generalized coherent power uh, as follows this. So coherent power is taking the soup over all incoherent state uh, incoherent states. And uh, we, we we try to find you know the map, I mean the soup on uh, the and the maximum uh, of the created coherence. But generalized coherent power uh, takes all input states. So it doesn't have to be um, co uh, incoherent state here. So uh, we so this diagram explains um, kind of that conceptual uh, kind of kind of that concept I want to talk. So then the, we uh, okay we are given the arbitrary operation. And if you define a coherent power, okay, we can kind of like assign the uh, coherent state or coherent amount of coherence to the arbitrary operation. And can we do the uh, the opposite direction? So then, the, if we have a um, coherent state and the incoherent operation, can we assign uh, like arbitrary operation or like some some kind of that? Then here. Actually, uh, we can. Uh, the question was yes. Uh, we have a very interesting uh, operational meaning of uh, coherent power. So let's say we have a system uh, low. This state uh, low is uh, arbitrarily and answer system, and we apply the incoherent operation. This operation it, that cannot uh, create a coherence and. We want to have uh, like state as a like kind of like simu simulating the uh, other like arbitrary operation uh, phi. Then uh, so if I mean if we could uh, if we could find such operation uh, satisfying this equation, so applying a, a global great uh, incoherent operation. Then the opposite after that uh, is actually like after real operation uh, tensile to like some other like answer system. Then 
the lower bound of the coherence in answer system uh, to do this is given by the cohering power of phi. Um, sorry, but yeah. uh, in general, is it possible, like for every channel of phi, can I sort of find this incoherent ancilla stigma um, uh, that allow me to realize the phi in this in general coherent phi? No, I mean, like this, actually, so this statement doesn't say, like, if we have a state with this coherence, then we can, then then there is a global inquiry interpretation like this. But this statement actually does, it just only says if there is a, such an operation, uh, like simulating. Uh, sure, sure, sure. I understand yeah. the, the statement, I understand, but I was more interested in just a general question can I always simulate in, uh, just a co coherent? Uh, Operation via incoherent one when I add. Uh, well, uh, maybe I can in general like in, 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 outside. Well, like in general, uh, you can find uh, you, you you can simulate any like um, operation uh, using a pure maximally coherent state. A pure it this the, at the, at this point uh, this anti incoherent operation. I, I, yeah, like I mean, like this uh, coherence in answer system is not a pure state, uh, pure maximally coherent state. And then maybe, yeah, I can I can send you on the paper uh, talk about more like a detail. So in general, it's possible. It's possible. Yes. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. So, and now uh, with that uh, interpretation, uh, we uh, kind of like have some, you know, uh, like the. Like you know, two-way uh, assigning uh, of, between uh, operation and the coherent state. Okay, so and we will uh, we will talk about more like sophisticated uh, case of this later, Bill. And we we have another uh, coherent coherent power um, like measure uh, like coherence generating capacity because. Coherent power is easy to understand, but the coherence generated is not a unit uh, coherence uh, generally. So, in entanglement theory, uh, like uh, with a Bell state, is a like very unit uh, like uh, state. But in uh, resource theory coherence, the unit coherence is a pure maximally coherent state plus this one. So we want to can analyze on more with this plus, okay? And then, um, so the coherent uh, generating capacity is defined uh, asymptotically a procedure like this. So this is very long, so I don't explain all, the, all of this, but this is basically, uh, we apply a given operation uh, to the system. And after that, we apply the global incoherent operation uh, over A and B, I mean, which is like environment. And again, we apply the given operation and incoherent operation, given operation, incoherent operation, all again, 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 again. And after like like uh, many rounds, uh, we would kind of like act, uh, we would get um, the system system state, which is uh, closer to the uh, pure uh, maximally, uh, pure maximally coherent state, uh, and then when, in terms of fidelity. And then that's amount is uh, given by this uh, equation. Yeah, actually this is quite difficult to evaluate. It's, it's is it like, a, it's, is it something similar to distillation of right? Yes, yeah, yeah, right. Because you distill, you you uh, sense the trace norm to the this maximally coherent uh, state. Yeah? yeah, I think yeah, the, the maybe like they got like inspiration from that. So and that equation is very yeah difficult to understand though. But it was shown that uh, that generating capacity is upper uh, like bounded by this quantity. This quantity 
is called a, co a complete coherent power. I think uh, adding the environments uh, is the reason uh, we call we we call the complete like complete like CPTP map like that. So it has a similar expression to generalized coherent power. So again, generalized coherent power didn't have a uh, environment. Uh, I mean, env environment terms, environment uh, uh, space. What we have here. So uh, we uh, and we denote uh, this complete coherent power by uh, this symbol, and also by uh, usually the coherent coherence generating capacity uh, uses like incoherent operation I O. Defined by this, but if we you if we allow uh, to use uh, like more like wider uh, subset of incoherent operation MIO, then this quantity is actually uh, equal to uh, complete coherent power. So this quantity is actually uh, closely related to the complete coherent power. Now, so we uh, we have the kind of summary of difference between them. So generalized coherent power is is motivated like how much coherence can be created at once of implementation, and it is easier to calculate compared to coherence generated capacity, and has a similar form form uh, with complete coherent power. And while uh, coherence generating capacity is defined in the motivation of that uh, how much co maximally coherent pure state can be created by multiple implementation of incoherent in in operation and a given operation. And it's also upper bounded by complete coherent power. So then complete coherent power is kind of the bridge uh, is the bridge uh, connecting these two concepts. Then, so here we have uh, like theory one, which actually I published uh, in my earlier paper, complete coherent power and generalized coherent power are actually equal. Even if you have, so that even if you take account our environment, it does not change for relative uh, for relative entropy of coherence. So then this uh, theory show, tells us uh, correlation with ancillary system do not enhance the ability of coherence. And also uh, because we uh, because uh, relative entropy of coherence have this property um, and like any I mean like any state of uh, pro any product state of in this term in this form uh, with uh, low uh, with uh, well, where a uh, low a is optimal for generalized coherent power. We don't have to care about a uh, low uh, sigma b. So as long as we have a low a uh, as an optimal state to create more coherence, we don't have to care about uh, entangled uh, sorry envir environment. So again, uh, we I, I want to uh, so emphasize uh, the result here. So coherence uh, generating capacity uh, is it's actually the upper bounded by uh, generalized uh, coherent power, which is equal to actually complete coherent power. So this say so this means like so this on the left hand side is. Uh, uh, the pure maximally coherent state, and we can actually multiple. Uh, we can do. We can uh, implement uh, multiple times uh, of given operation, but it is less than um, single implementation uh, for the mixed coherence. So then, it's kind of roughly say uh, it's very hard to 
create a pure maximally coherent state compared to like mixed coherent state. And uh, so, uh, so like as uh, as the question, so then if, sorry, so that's, uh, so co coherence generating capacity is creating uh, like cohe not coherence, but uh, pure uh, coherence, uh, pure maximally, sorry, <laughs> maximally coherent state uh, from a given operation. So and then, so if we are have um, enough amounts of the pure uh, maximally coherent state or uh, then incoherent operation, then we can actually yeah, simulate uh, any like CPTP map. And that is like shown in the, this paper, uh, like it's, it's, it's kind of connect, it's kind of connecting um, like, like one operation to uh, pure um, uh, coherence, uh, pure, maximally pure coherence state. So then uh, it's a kind of resource theory of coherence in terms of operation. So maybe, yeah, I, I, I can share this paper as well. How many times do you have? 27 minutes. 20, 27, so. So, and uh, yeah, we, we, we want to consider uh, the coherent power as well. Like in the same spirit, generalized the coherent power was introduced uh, like this. So we like kind of like switching uh, these two terms. So then we, uh, yeah. And complete decoherent power uh, was defined too uh, in the same way. And one question is, do we have a similar re relation for decoherent power uh, as we have a coherent power? More directly, these two uh, quantities are equal or not generally? The answer was is no. It's they are not uh, equal, right? different from the coherent power. So the, here is an example. So if we take a complete uh, erasing channel, like which gives uh, like zero state, get zero uh, regardless regardless uh, input, has a strictly greater uh, I mean, the string of greater complete decoherent power uh, than general decoherent power here. So, like we, uh, let's say, we consider the two qubit state here, uh, uh, psi AB, uh, like this, then here. Then, um, so the, before this operation, uh, the coherence is two. For this uh, input state, because of maximally coherent, and the state after the operation uh, is going to be zero zero tensor like uh, maximally mixed state. Um, then, so this state does not have any coherence, right? It's it's it doesn't have any like uh, non-diagonal terms. So then the coherence is zero. Then uh, complete decoherent power in this case is two, which is actually strictly greater than uh, the generalized decoherent power, uh, which is one uh, for plus state uh, in a single qubit case. So, so then we. We, we saw uh, like, yes, a complete decoherent power is greater than general decoherent power. And, but why there is a difference between the complete coherent power and decoherent power? Then I thought, okay, maybe like some correlation or entanglement uh, do something uh, on decoherent power. Then I uh, considered another scenario uh, where we restrict the input state to separable state. 
So we uh, prepare the separable state and do the same thing. So we apply only like uh, operation on this system state, low, low I, and we get this. Surprisingly, without entanglements, uh, less degrees happens. So actually the uh, entanglement does work. So complete degree power uh, is usually uh, upper bounded by two log two D uh yes actually so the complete decreasing of power is not uh increasing as we take uh, the uh, dimension of environment some uh i mean like l1 the other uh coherence quantifier l1 the norm of coherence um uh, uh complete decreasing of power or coherence of power of l1 with uh, l1 norm measure uh, is not uh, are not bounded. Actually, if you take it's it's very uh, obvious because if you take uh, a dimension to like uh, like large, then the simple like a coherent state and the other like environmental state and then the non-diagonal terms, um, you know, mock mock. Um, multiplied um, like any like um, so infinitely so then the, this uh, upper bound is very important because we we we, do, we don't want to we don't want to have uh, like you know in, in, in the infinity here so it should be like uh, uh, upper bounded for some uh, reasonable uh, amount so then this d is a dimension of um, like system uh, dimension of the system, so that it's kind of reasonable because um, so if you have like a small uh, operation on the small uh, system, small dimension system, then that decreasing power is also bounded uh, in terms of the that, that dimension. And also, if you restrict the initial uh, state to be separable. Then the upper bound uh, will be the same uh, with the uh, big uh, generalized decoding of power, which is log 2 D. Yes. Why is it surprising? Why would you expect something different? Because uh, if you don't have entanglement, yes. obviously you, you have less coherence, right? You need superposition to have entanglement. Why? Why would this is surprising? Not um, expected. It's a, because even if you have entanglements, uh, I thought it's not that like, obvious because uh, operation is only applied on uh, uh, the system uh, state. So then, sorry, you. you um, Maybe I can comment because we we we, we dealt with that in in a, a specific model or a family of models of open uh, open systems, and uh, it seems that what uh, somehow measures the power of decoherence is the strength of correlations that is built before you trace out part of the system. Uh, so the stronger the correlations are the more you lose, so to say, so the more decoherence happens if you uh, forget about the part of the system. Uh, obviously to us, it was first also surprising that actually we needed entanglement to create some sort of specific post decoherence state. But then a little bit of uh, thinking makes you realize that actually you have more decoherence, the stronger decoherence, the, the stronger the correlations are uh, between the subsystem, so maybe just as a comment. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's it's so a pardon. So 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 just to finish the thought. So logically, if you have a very strong correlation, which is like quantum entanglement, you can expect quite a lot of decoherence because you lose a lot if you forget forget about the system. Yeah. So yeah, it's. It's it's uh, yeah I, I, yeah I wrote surprisingly but it's it's kind of very 
I mean, um, kind of intuitive uh, or like it's it's very. Uh, it's, this is actually like uh, like uh, this what what I expected uh, like before I uh, proved this theory, but it's a very kind of like convincing result uh, for me as well. Okay, and so. So here are some remarks, but is this these remarks are related to the proof of uh, this theorem too. So I would like to uh, little, mention uh, a little about the proof of theorem two. So we want to uh, the uh, upper bound of the complete differing of power. Uh, uh, so then uh, it's it's given by so this uh, this formula so that this is uh, actually wait I think sorry I kind of <laughs> forget for the first line but so uh, what but I want to say is uh, so this and complete degrading of power is upper bounded in in uh, in these like equations. So then uh, here is a fundamental entropy of uh, system A and in the, in the on the system. So then we don't have any dependency on the system B in the, in the environment and. Uh, so to get uh, to get maximal value value of uh, the coherence to log to d, we have to oh sorry this this one we have to have um, the <coughs> the we have to have these two terms uh, to be big to large uh, I mean that log to d. In that case. Um, like low a, like in the input state, um, input state must be like uh, uh, like incoherent, uh, more or maximally like mixed uh, state. Yeah. So then it's kind of so that if we consider like whole state uh, as a an input state as a whole state, it has certain like uh, coherence because we want to break, we want to destroy that coherence. But um, that input state is actually like incoherent state. Uh, if we like, if we um, uh, throw away uh, the environment, so that's a, that's a, what this remark says. So then, if we just uh, um, if we uh, throw away the environment, we get uh, the uh, a maximally mixed state on the incoherent state uh, in uh, system A. So not not coherent, uh, not coherent coherent state. And also, uh, if like low A is maximally coherent, the like opposite. So if low A is if you uh, prepare them uh, lo uh, maximally lo locally maximally coherent uh, low a, then the last uh, line of this equation uh, this so this part is going to be z uh, uh, zero and only so this part is going to be zero and only this like uh, um, Part is going to be like log to d, then uh, like uh, destroy the coherence, and then coherence cannot be greater than log to d. So which is the maximum value of general the coherent power. So if we want to break, even if you want to break on the more the coherence, you can you cannot prepare the state um, which is locally coherent. It's kind of um, well. It's 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 kind of like uh, counterintuitive for me, 
students. And these upper bounds are all the uh, optimal bounds, which depends on the dimension of the boundary channel of EPS. Okay, and the last remark is entanglement helps us to destroy coherence, but not always. For this input state psi, uh, given by this equation, the destroyed coherence uh, is given by uh, two H, this is uh, Shannon uh, uh, entropy and sine the square of uh, theta. And this is, this uh, is sometimes uh, greater than one, but not always, it depends on the theta. But uh, if you have an, uh, another input state phi, which is given by this. Uh, but what is capital phi is there above? Capital phi is, here is uh, this is uh, I think uh, that's the uh, Elysian channel. Sorry, I didn't. Yeah. So. But so if we have the, another input state phi, uh, which has the same entanglement to the psi, but the destroy the coherence amount is one plus uh, h uh, sine theta uh, sine theta squared. Yeah. So this is uh, um, strictly greater than, I mean, not, not strictly, but uh, it's greater than uh, the G generalized degree in power. I mean, the, 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 it's greater than one. Uh, I mean, it depends on the theta, but um, if you have the, on the, some value uh, greater than zero, it always uh, surpass the generalized uh, degree in power. So then uh, entangle, sometimes entanglement helps us, but sometimes not. Okay. Yeah. That is, okay. Uh, okay. I finish uh, my talk here. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, any questions? Do we have any questions? Uh, maybe I have a question. So, uh, uh, is there some sort of a complementarity relation between uh, coherent and decohering measures, like powers or or capacities? Because they are sort of like duals to each other. So, is there is there some sort of like a complementarity relation? If you I don't know add one to the other, then you get some constant or something like that. Um, to, to my knowledge, I don't think so. I mean, like, okay. not, not such a, okay, okay. I mean, so, um, uh, yeah, we, I mean, like we have general degree power when it comes to power and the green generating capacity and, uh, we we have a uh, decoherent power measure, but we don't have the I mean, the, the corresponding uh, to, I mean the analog to the generating capacity for a decoherent case. So then uh, I mean, and uh, they they are not very there there is no like simple like like comparison. And what was, what was can you? Uh... Can you maybe recall what was the definition of generalized decohering power? Generalized decohering power of this. Not coherent, but decohering. Is it, uh, is de it just de the minus of it or? Yeah, minus. Ah, okay, yeah. okay. Oh, uh, so, so there is for sure, there is one trivial relation that CR plus DR equals zero, yeah? CR plus DR equals zero. Yeah, yeah, but this is. Oh, yeah. 
this is of course trivial because it follows from the from from, from the definition. Yeah, but okay. The problem is that it's difficult to say what would that mean to be maximally decoherent. Maybe is not so bad, but what the, what would that mean to be still decoherent? Which awkward sounding. Uh... Uh, sorry, I, I, maybe I don't no, I'm just, I'm, don't worry, I'm just thinking aloud. Yeah. Yeah, maybe it has absolutely no sense what I'm saying, but just just taking the liberty to think aloud. Yeah, I think, um, so, yeah, like these, like the coherent power or a coherent power study, like can be like, connected to the, uh, more the coherent theory, uh, like which is like you were like. Uh, this is this is what I wanted. Yeah. That, that that would be my second comment. That yeah. uh, all that is a uh, quite a, well, it's a abstract uh, theory, and of course a, a major uh, major objection against this uh, theory of coherence is that you have a fixed basis. Which in this abstract uh, abstract setting, it has to be simply postulated that you have a basis of interest, which you uh, keep fixed and, and define all those measures with respect to it. While what I wanted to comment that you can you can apply these measures to a uh, open quantum systems where very often you have a uh, preferred basis, the so-called pointer basis, the basis where your decoherence is is happening. So you can treat it as a toolbox and take this toolbox and apply to a more or less realistic physics of uh, open systems and see, for example, how those measures depend uh, on time, so system parameters, like temperature, yeah. and so on. Yeah, so, so uh, I would counter this objection that some people have, that there is a preferred basis saying that, okay, but there is a, big class of real physics systems where at least approximately you have this uh, basis or it's very desirable to have this basis, which is the pointer basis of open, open systems. And then you have a natural framework well to apply all those uh, measures. Okay, do we have more questions? If not, I think we can uh, thanks Masai again.